In this video, we're going to talk about how to actually classify those critical points once we arrive at critical points for functions of two variables. Now, this is essentially akin to the second derivative test that we have from back in Calc 1. It is going to be using the second derivatives of a function to, to determine things like the concavity of the function at a critical point. Now, because we have so many directions from which we can approach a point, determine and, sorry, uh, spelling stuff is hard. The Hessian determinant is the quantity that we're going to use to describe this situation. It is also known as simply the D. The D is referring to a second derivative test of sorts. We take the second derivative of f with respect to x, multiply it by the second derivative of f with respect to y, and then subtract the mixed partial derivative squared. Now for those that study linear algebra, you'll notice the use of the term determinant in here. That's because this expression could also be expressed as a two by two determinant. Now in these uh, four spots here, we are going to be putting <clears throat> derivatives with respect to x and derivatives with respect to y. Derivative with respect to x and a derivative with respect to y. So in the 1-1 one, one entry, this would be the first column, first row. So that would be the second derivative with respect to x. So a second derivative of f with respect to x. Over here, we would have the mixed partial derivative down here, we would see the same. And over here, we would have the second partial derivative of f with respect to y. And of course, we give that a little slashy slashy, and we wind up with exactly this expression. So these two multiplied together would be accounted for with a plus. And then these two, despite the fact that they're in the opposite order, Clairaut's theorem takes care of that. Mixed partial derivatives or mixed second partial derivatives will be equal to each other. Now we can use this to classify any critical point that we have. Next up, of course, would be the interpretation of this. So we find our critical points, we find D, and we plug the critical points into D. So situation number one, if D is greater than zero, there are generally going to be two situations where this occurs. The uh, second derivatives both indicate that the curve is concave up or they are both negative, and so it would be concave down. So the critical point is either a local minimum or a local maximum. I realize that, they, that that might be kind of confusing due to the fact that those were the only two kinds of critical points that we had back in Calc 1. However, when we have access to multiple variables like we do in Calc 3, um, there is another kind of critical point. Now, in the event that you do wind up with a positive, go back to these two guys right here and say the only way for the D to be positive is if these are both positive or both negative. So take a look at either one. So if the second partial derivative with respect to x is greater than zero, then that is indicative of the fact that we have concave up. So the critical point is a local minimum. Concave up means that a trace of that curve would look like this therefore giving us a local minimum. If the second partial derivative of f with respect to x is less than zero, this is indicative of something that is concave down. Concave down implies a local maximum. Now, for a graph in two dimensions, concave down looks like this. Now, in the event that D winds up being at negative, 
Generally what that means is that from one of these two perspectives it looks like a local maximum, and from the other it looks like a local minimum. In that case, the critical point is a saddle point. A saddle point is a critical point that looks like a local minimum from one perspective and a local maximum from another perspective. The quintessential example of a saddle point, and I would recommend that you look into this, is the hyperbolic paraboloid z equals x squared minus y squared. Take a look at the graph of that for a better interpretation of exactly what is meant by a saddle point. Now we also have a very, very trauma-inducing conclusion that if d is equal to zero, that means that we can draw no conclusion. Thankfully, this very rarely, if ever, comes up, so don't worry about that last case too much.